Good morning. Robert Davis back with you. It's uh, going on 5 o'clock in the morning, Thursday, June 23rd. And uh, what we're going to do is a tutorial on how to make use of Nexus DB or the Nexus database in your Delphi software. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to launch the uh, Enterprise Manager and we'll create our table by right clicking on this and say new database alias and we're going to say tutorial nexus db data will be the path to the working files and double click this and there you see tutorial database created now let's go ahead and create a new table give it a name we'll call this table context tbl context and we'll go to the field descriptors and start inserting fields this will be ID, it's auto ink, and it's required. That will be maintained by the database engine itself. This will be F, F name, short string is fine, give that 25, it's probably too much, but so what? and it's required. Oh, we got to make this one required too. And then we'll have M name That's fine. It's not required. Some people just don't have one or they don't want to tell you. And this will be uh, L name it is required so they have to have a first and last name along with the uh, database auto ink field and this will be that's fine it's not required that's fine it's not required I'm just tabbing Not required. Call it two. And zip. See, that's a ten. Not required. Phone fourteen. Not required. And email. Uh, we'll make this a hundred. Some people have really long emails. And then finally, we'll have a notes field. And this will be a wide let me see this data type if there's oh yeah there's a blob uh, for memos that's up here here we go right here and th that's not required either so so now all we do is press the, no, let's do index descriptors too. I forgot about that. I'm just getting used to this myself. It already has sequence, sequential and access index already created. We'll insert a new one and we'll call this
and then we'll get this a name. Um, I'll name insert. First name, insert, middle name, and let's see, want to, uh, want to move L name up, and F name up one. And uh, let's also create, there's our context table. That's fine. So we have an index for the full name. And we're pretty much done in uh, Enterprise Manager. So we'll close that. Go to Delphi here. We want to create a new VCL application. Here we go. The first thing we'll do is go to File Other. We want Delphi Database and we want the Data Module. Okay, there we go. Let's expand this a little bit. Just for now. Go down here to Nexus DB. And we need a server engine. We need a session. We need a database. And we need a table. Okay, so let's get these separated a little bit. And on the server engine, what properties do we need? Um, actually, I don't think we need any properties here. So that's activate design time. Now we need session and Identify the server engine. And let's see. I think that's all we need here. Yeah. And database. We need session. And we need alias path and I'm just going to put the path in here and let's see if we can connect yes we can and then the table we need a session we need the alias name Get my head of one screwed on. And let's see if we can activate that. Unknown database. Just a minute. Well, silly me. I left out the database name. What's the matter with me? Database one, yeah. So now we should be able to connect. No? Oh. Table name. Context. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. There we go. We're all connected to the internal server. So this is a local implementation of Nexus DB. Uh, we'll cover uh, 
client server in a separate tutorial. So what we need to do here also go up here get a data access data source we'll put that over here under the table and we need that to be table one okay and we're active right yeah okay now let's go over here to unit three or the main form no back here double click gotta get the fields add all fields and we'll just uh, then we'll go over here to unit 3 and select all of these plus notes and drag and drop over here form 3 is not using data module 4 do you wish to use this form yes we do and we don't need another data source on here let's see we'll make this what's the rest of them 329 we'll we'll make uh, that 329 just so they're all equal in length or close to it bring that out maybe down a bit more and now we need data control db navigator put that puppy up here and stretch this out okay Got that going. And now we need to assign all of these data controls to a data source, which will be data source one in the data module. So we can select all these at once and And what? There we go. Use the uh, data source one and data module four. So now we should be able to run this and go where we're looking for. Let's uh, create a new folder for this. We'll call it Nexus DB Tutorial local double click on it and I'm just going to go with the defaults and see we're running now there's something wrong here because it's not um, okay I know what's wrong probably this table needs to be active at design time and run time. That should do it. I'm going to use That should do it. Yep, there we go. We're ready to put in. So there we go with me.
and we can click the post or we can uh, click the post and we can put in the record I'll do that real quick note, note or And when you scroll off of it, it commits the post. So there we go. We have a working application now. Now let's do a little eye candy work. We want this form to have a caption. And so we will call this And then we want the form to be positioned um, in the screen center. There we go. And we want to give it a little pizzazz. So we'll do so we'll do project options appearance and one I've been liking lately is Luna save that now let's run it see what it looks like there we are screen center the Luna style and the caption of the form so there you have workable, workable contacts database with the Nexus DB or Nexus database. And this is in just local only. It's using the internal embedded server in your application. But it's certainly capable of multi-user uh, client server remote access also and we'll cover that in another tutorial but this will get you up and running with the internal server the embedded server and at that point all you need to deploy is the application and then the database alias and path so you could uh, actually put that in a um, dialog that the user could fill out. You can hard code the database name, but they may um, send that to a different path. So anyway, but that's all there is to it. I don't know what that took, 15 minutes max. And uh, <laughs> the uh, file server remote is not much more complicated at all so it's just you got a t windsock transport that you have to put on your data module as well so there you go and i hope you enjoyed this i've enjoyed spending this time with you again i'm robert davis and i'll see you in the next tutorial okay bye